This is a typical sort of job that we get involved with. Uh, this is a customer's 550 Marinello that's got a very slight dent in the offside rear quarter, probably being caused by the fuel filler and someone's just caught it. So rather than paint the whole rear wing, which would involve going up to the roof and blending through the door, Abi has a dent man, he's come here today to try and lift it out um, without the requirement to paint the wing. So by going, going through the rear light, we can get the tool directly behind the dent and just lift the panel out by just pressing that exact spot. It has disappeared, I must say. It looks like it's gone to me. We can usually get rid of sort of 90% of the dent with this sort of non-painting process. What we're doing now is just warming the panel up and it'll expand the panel and as it contracts, it can help reduce the dent. Which I must say, looks like it's pretty well gone already. It is amazing what these guys achieve. I mean, your eyes with a box of spanners that looks like a plumber's toolkit, and here we are, within 10 minutes, we've taken the dent out of a very expensive wing without having to do any, any paintwork at all. Um, brilliant. Another area that we have problems with during restoring these classic cars is glass. Now, because of the age of these vehicles, some of the glass is up to 40 years old or even older, and it's going to incur some scratches over the years. This one, uh, the quarter light glass on the earlier cars, is the metal catch is stuck to the glass, it's bonded on, and this one's come unstuck. So we're cleaning the glass and re-bonding the catch onto the quarter light. Now this is an area that we need specialist assistance with, because polishing glass is obviously a, a very <laughs> specialist subject. Now the guy that looks after our glass is Tim here. So Tim's just working on a, another piece of glass on the bench. How are we getting on? Yeah, it's coming on. I think we're nearly there. Brilliant. Cool, blimey, yeah, that has Let's come up. Let's hope. Fantastic. <laughs> the reason we have to polish the glass, I've got one here. The, this is a, a modern piece of glass, and you can see the edges are more greeny colour. So that's a replacement piece of quarter light. But if you compare that to the, I'm going to drop this, the quarter light of the car that's, that we're doing, we've got a grey edge against a green edge. So we can't buy this glass. So we have to always restore the original, which is what we're doing on this one. This is the fabulous Ferrari Daytona. This is a 1970 supercar. It's one of the V12 front engine cars, 4.4 litre and 175 mile an hour, which in 1970 was astronomical. We were asked by a client to find such a car a few months ago, and we've managed to find and secure this car for him. As you can see, from our point of view, it's a brilliant starting point. Some of our projects arrive in trailers, in boxes, just body shells. This is a fabulous car. It, the engine actually runs and we'll fire it up shortly. In October 1971, the Americans, in their infinite wisdom, decided that they didn't like plexiglass cars because they missed it up. So that's why the later cars had pop-up headlights. From a rarity point of view, this now means that there's only about 40 of these cars in right-hand drive with plexiglass. So from a client point of view of an asset, financially going forwards, it's a very secure bet. Engine-wise, it doesn't look too bad in there, and the engine does run. The trouble is the head gaskets are just hemorrhaging water. We, this car came out of a, a collection. It was in a barn doing nothing. We managed to spend a day getting the engine started, but the water just falls out the side of the block. The head gaskets are pouring out, so it's got to come out and be rebuilt. The paintwork on the car, it looks like it's had about three paint jobs, one after another, and there's certain areas where it's all crazing and cracking. But again, that can be addressed. The wheels were original option. The independent suspension's all good. The vented disc brakes are all there. The glass isn't too bad. The, the chrome is good. The bits that really make cause us problems on these restorations, if there's parts missing, so a missing piece of chrome or a missing door catch, anything like that causes us big problems. But as you can see, this car is pretty much complete. This is quite a special car. This is the original Motor Show um, 1970 246 Dino. And it's been, we've got the archive from Ferrari. It is the first car, the first right-hand drive car. So it's a very special car. 
And today's a special day because we're just about to fire the engine up. We haven't started it yet. Um, it's had a complete rebuild. It's had pistons, unleaded head conversion. We've done all the gearbox, bulk rings, synchros. It's had the whole lot. So this is an awful lot of man hours that have gone into this, this car. Now we always start the engines, it's a very special day when we start the engines and we've never had customers here when we do it. So we thought while the camera's here today, we'd share this one with you. So hopefully it'll go all right. We're just gonna get the guys to put the oil in, the water in, fuel in, and we'll see if it goes. Obviously one of the hazards of working on these cars now is you've got to do everything without scratching the paint. This is a different oil to the oil that the car will run on eventually. This is a primarily a, a mineral oil um, for running in purposes. If you, if you put a top quality motor oil in, the piston rings will never bed in. So we run it on this for a few hundred miles and then we drain it out again. The car holds about eight litres, so it'll take one and a half drumfuls. I'm pouring this oil in, hopefully none of it's coming out the bottom. There's a bit that always catches you out on Dino's. There's a temperature sensor that goes in the bottom of the gearbox. And we have done it before that if you forget to put the temperature sensor in, you fill it up and it'll leak straight out the bottom. Going from that. Yeah, we've got a leak. A, we've got one leak coming from a little hose. Oh, that Jubilee clip. Oh, the, the T point, yeah. That one. Yeah, one of those. We'll do them all up. Golden rule is something I've learnt over the 30 odd years I've been doing this, is you always check down a carburetor before you touch any throttles, just to make sure there's nothing sitting on the butterflies over the last few months of the car sitting here. We're just bleeding the radiator. The, the way the Ferrari designed the um, cooling systems on these is the engine's quite high in the middle and the back of the car. The coolant pipes actually go down through the middle of the tunnel to the radiator at the front. So the, the high points are air at the top of the front radiator and the top of the engine. Now the engine is bled through the expansion tank. So there's a little thumb screw on the top of the radiator, which is a bit like your um, radiators at home, like a little bleed screw. And we just bleed the air through. Now, we've already, during the engine build, incorporated a small drilling in the thermostat, which allows the coolant to circulate and self-bleed. So normally it comes through, but they do hold a lot of, because of the amount of pipe work in these, they do hold a few gallons of, of liquid. If you do power at the front, you've got the master switch, so if anything electrical, you can shut it off. If Steve does fire extinguisher, not that we're paranoid, but we'd rather protect anything if it does happen. Steve's on fire extinguisher, Rob's on power, Ben's on key, I'll do throttle, Matt's on leaks. So if you turn ignition, turn power on on the front, turn the ignition on then. See the red light on the left gauge? We need to crank it over until that goes out. So if you crank the engine over. Right, right, turn the ignition off. What we do now, we put the fuel pump fuse in. This is obviously the first time the fuel system's had any fuel and you can see it coming through the pipes. So we just want to make sure there's no big leaks. Right, we've got fuel. Go on in. Yes, we got a leak. Yeah, oh. Well, it runs, and I must say that <laughs> that's fantastic. It runs with no noises, but we've got a leak. Where's it leaking from? Uh, banjo. Which one? Oh, that one. Banjo, the one that always leaks every single car we ever built. That's tight. We'll have to put um, 
Thackeray washers on that. It's got it's to. Got, I have doubt you what. Well, at least you know we're doing this live. We're not making this up. <laughs> this is real life. This is what happens. But fundamentally, the engine runs brilliantly, and it's got good oil pressure. Leaking banjos and leaking unions, we can fix. So no, very pleased with that. I think well done to the team for achieving this sort of level of restoration in such a short time. So that's the major bit of this. This fantastic restoration that we can now re relax a little bit that the engine runs but you can see we've still got a long way to go we've got to bleed the hydraulics on the brakes fit the wheels finish off the interior as i mentioned earlier the carpets are coming but at least we can put the seats in uh, we've got a little bit of electrical work to do on the wiper mechanism and wiper switches um, and basically to get this car up the road and road tested because we've still only got two and a half weeks before it's due on the lawn at the national concourse so there's still a long way to go but we'll get it done. We've never, never missed a deadline.